this is my styrofoam um, fawn pot and various other insulation that I use for making things. It's uh, about $11 a sheet for a 4x8 sheet from Lowe's. And you could probably get this, well I'm quite sure you could get this uh, from any big box store. You can see there that it's half inch thick and it has an R value of 3. Alright, I'm going to demonstrate how I make the smallest fawn pot and that is a six ring pot with uh, with a seven and a half by nine inch uh, spacing and I'm going to show you that now actually the length is going to determine the spacing between each plant and the smallest one that I've done so far is nine inches and I have some down here that are 12 inches Going over the materials I'm using for this, I've got 6,300 feet, and it says the weight of this is three pounds, but I think the tensile strength, is it on there? Uh, no, but I think it's like 70 pounds for this stuff. It is extremely strong, and it will flat out cut into your skin before you can break it. I use this for everything including the bean trellis that I did it's very very cheap and I'll post the price in the video also I've got a box box cutter or razor blade knife whatever you want to call it very very versatile in everything that I do in here I use it to cut the corrugated pipe I use it to cut the material here I use a marker a pen will do sometimes but a marker like a sharpie that'll definitely work real good on these three inch neck cup these are the fawn feeders it's the standard uh, hydroponic three inch neck cup and uh, uh, attached to my drill here is a two and seven eighths inch hole saw and that is what's used to cut the hole for this so first thing i'm going to do is I'm going to measure from here to here and here to here, create a little center spot to actually drill out my hole. Okay, let me see if I can do this with one hand. I'm going to use it against this and against my stomach here so that I can do this for you on cam. When you take this hole saw, you want to make it in reverse. See how it's turning counterclockwise there? If you do it clockwise when it grabs it'll flat jerk it's it's not such a big deal in styrofoam but if you do anything else like the plastic tubs that I do it will uh, it could jerk you could sprain your arm or maybe even crack it so we're gonna go counterclockwise and drill. now I take the net pot and you can, you can see here that it fits straight down in that in a pretty little circle. Because we're going to trim this up because you want to, you can see how it's not exactly right. And we want seven, uh, six rings. And you can see there's extra here and there's extra here. And I'm going to trim that down flat so it sits flat on this. Okay, I've trimmed off the edges. You can kind of see here that it's it's pretty neat all the way around it should sit pretty flat here and I've got one two three four five six a six ring fawn pot now I'm going to affix it to the styrofoam board again using my multi-talented belly I'm going to take here and drill it and you'll see a nice little hole this is my little work table two bench underneath the nutrient tank up here. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take and, well I usually, because this tomato twine is frazzled on the end, I usually take and make a little knot in it like that and trim the excess down. So that makes a nice place to poke it through various things. So 
back to what I'm doing here. Let's find the hole. Here it is. Stick it through. You can see there. And we're going to put it onto this. And tie it. The first time I do it, I wrap it twice. And I hold it with my finger like that. And I go the opposite way. You can see that more or less the string is on the center part of the round uh, hole on the inside. I go ahead and tie it off. I go opposite one time here. And then one more overhand knot to secure it. And then I cut off the excess. And you'll notice I've got more string here to do the other side. Now what you see here is you've got the string or the tomato twine tied here. It's at the lowest point of the circle in here and it's kind of digging into this so it's pretty stable. It does slide back and forth a little bit here but once I do this other side it won't do it nearly as much and then once the dirt's in there it'll even do it less. So. Let's make another one. You can see here, that's what she looks like. We're going to stick the, the uh, net cup in there. And now we've got the uh, finished planter, a finished fawn pot. This is the smallest version. Seems like a corrugated pipe for a hundred foot is, oh, 60 or $70, but it's a hundred feet. And the reason why I use this to begin with is because when I made the French drain last year, the beginning of last year, it's almost two years now, I had a, a lot of this left over. So like everything I do, I try to reuse the net cups. Just if you're going to do any kind of sub-irrigated planting or uh, sucking nutrient up from the bottom up, you've got to have some net cups. These are Rango gutters. And they're what I use in this whole system and uh, the fawn system. And they are uh, $7 for a 10 foot piece, like six something, almost $7. And the end caps here are roughly $3 a piece. And they have a little seal in it. Uh, but over a short period of time, less than six months for sure, if not right off the bat, they can start le start leaking so if you look at some of my other videos you'll see where I use small screws one on each side here and one on the bottom through the gutter and then I put some uh, silicone on it to keep them uh, from leaking this is that 100 foot piece there's not 100 foot left but this is that originally a 100 foot piece of corrugated perforated uh, drain pipe it's four inch in diameter and it is HDPE rated for those that are concerned about plastic chemicals and you can google what that means but basically it means uh, that it's safe it's the same stuff used with milk jugs and other plastic products that we consume from all the time so that is what the fawn pots are constructed of as well as pill bug planters I cut a 24 inch piece of excuse me 27 inch piece of corrugated four inch perforated drain pipe and I will clean up the ends okay you can see where I've cleaned up the ends here and on each seam I cut a little V pattern and that's going to help me pull, pull this down to connect the ends all right like I showed you before I drilled a hole in this side the other side has the slit and we will take and route this through okay and then we'll go through the hole on the other side and here's the tricky part I start off by tying it wrapping it two times and I start pulling it close and then I usually put it like this As I wrap it, pull it, or as I pull it tight, 
I push push these two together. Let it sit for a second. Okay. It's hard to kind of stay here in the front of the camera and do this for you. Okay, you can kind of see that it's pretty tight there. And I'll take and I'll trim off the extra and give you a look at what that looks like. Now, one thing you can do if you wanted to is you could take and trim these little flaps up just a shade and uh, makes it even look better. I'll do the same thing on the other side and I'll be back. Okay, with the pill bug planter, I took a 24 inch section of the Rango gutter and I cut the little lip here off. Um, my other ones have the lip still, but uh, I think I want to remove a little bit of the lip. Still adds uh, a lot of structural integrity to the four inch drain pipe, which is a little bit flexible. And uh, hopefully it'll present a little better. Uh, this is the finished product. Uh, this particular pill bug planter is an open area here and that's just for uh, the purpose of growing like leafy vegetables like turnips and um, things that don't just have like three holes in it plant so you can plant throughout the whole thing turnips spinach possibly other type vegetables but um, I'm gonna make a few of these and as you can see from over there I have a large with a three hole type here are the remnants of my planters I used for drip irrigation. You can see here there's a hole in the top cross member where I put the drip tube. There's even an old tomato plant sitting in here. Uh, the medium I used was perlite. Got uh, 10 more of the Splenda sucralose buckets that I converted. It's in a previous video at the beginning of this year. But uh, that's where it all began. Uh, first part of the con the uh, conversion is to remove this top uh, handle slash strap. I had it zip tied in right here on the inside before, and so we'll remove that. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to drill holes in the bottom here. After you drill all the holes, what you need to do is you need to put two holes on the edge here, and those are what's going to fasten this via a zip tie to the styrofoam board and uh, I'll show you that in a minute but first what we have to do is prepare the handle here's the handle I used my row zip tool with the little grinder end and just cut it off I know you're not gonna be making a bucket like this it'd be pretty rare for someone to copy me exactly so a lot of the details of this uh, you know you you can take my idea, my concept, if you want to go this route and, uh, you know, do something similar. Okay, now you can see the handle is affixed to the pot. And the zip tie, it's an 8 inch zip tie, is on the inside. And I use these zip ties for a lot of things. Even throughout the construction of the greenhouse is an extra uh, precaution. And securing and fastening things and uh, they're pretty stout I think that uh, you can get 500 for about 12 to 15 bucks somewhere in there 500 of them bad boys it's a good deal the final part of putting this together is to take a 12 by 12 piece of styrofoam board and I cut out a, a spot leaving about three inches all the way around uh, these are rough cuts they don't have to be exact but what's going to happen here is this will set on top i'll space it evenly all the way around and you can see from in here that'll allow the neck cup to go through plus these holes will also uh, allow air to come up from 
the Rango gutter from underneath, it'll be able to get up into there. And also on the sides, if you look real close the way these are built, there's a slit or a space on the edge of the bucket right there. Air can also get in through there and uh, potentially feed the roots uh, near the bottom. And you know, when I noticed these pots here is that um, you'll get some, well, there's not any mature roots on this one. And I came to one of the cabbages, a little more mature over here, but you can see underneath here that there's some fuzzy air roots and that's the effect of air pruning. You have feeder roots that go down into the flowing nutrient and then you have these fuzzy ones that are that provide all the nutrient that uh, uh, are the air and nutrient that the plants need. There's two different types of roots and let me see if I can lift this here. You can see that if the plant gets everything it needs, even a big plant, the roots aren't outrageously huge. And I found that to be true with the tomatoes as well. So that changes a little bit of my perception on this type of growing and uh, I'll elaborate on that in the future videos. Okay, I've aligned this pretty, pretty much center on this platform, this foam board. And what I'm gonna do here is go in and I'm gonna take this, uh, it's a paintbrush that I that I'm going to use for um, pollinating my strawberries and other and potentially other plants. But what I'm going to take here is I'm going to make a little mark where the zip tie needs to go through on both sides. This is always fun work to do when you're trying to hold the camera and do stuff at the same time. So there you go, and you can see the holes that I made. And now I'll just secure it with the zip tie like I did the handle and show you the result of that. All right, this is the finished product. This is what it looks like on the bottom. You can see where the zip ties come through. And then this is what it looks like on the inside. A little hard to see with the shadows, but you can see that's where the head of the zip tie is pulled through. And that completes construction of the fawn planter.